Hey everyone, I'm Jason Fitzgerald, the head coach at strengthrunning.com, and you are watching episode eight, got that right, of Q&A with Coach, where you submit your running questions and I answer them. Today is a very special Q&A with Coach because we are focusing on racing strategy and how to improve your racing skills so that you can ultimately race faster. So let's get to our first question from Patrick. I'm curious about using smaller races to prepare for a marathon and how to avoid peaking at the wrong time. Patrick. Great stuff, Patrick. Uh, using smaller races uh, or shorter races before a marathon is a valuable strategy to make sure that you are race ready on the day of your marathon. Uh, there's a couple things to keep in mind about using smaller races before a marathon. First and foremost, you want to make sure that the races that you're running are specific to the marathon. Uh, and, and you do this simply by making sure that you're not racing, say, the mile uh, before a marathon as opposed to a half marathon. It's pretty standard to race a half marathon as a tune-up race roughly four to six weeks before your marathon. Uh, this is uh, helpful in a lot of ways. Number one, it's gonna give you an accurate estimate of your fitness level so that you can fine tune your marathon pace goals for your goal marathon. Uh, it's also going to really reinforce the race day strategy for you. So everything from getting up early, making sure that your breakfast that day is, is dialed in and you're not eating anything new. All of the steps that you have to take the morning of a race to make sure that you're uh, doing everything appropriately uh, it is going to be very beneficial for you to practice before your goal marathon. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it's just really valuable to get in a very long, hard effort. The, mar the half marathon at 13.1 miles is uh, very specific to the marathon. Uh, you're going to be racing uh, of course, faster than you would during the marathon, but obviously a lot slower than if you're running a shorter race. Uh, and that brings me to kind of the uh, last section of your question, which is how do you avoid burnout? Um, and so burnout and, and peaking at the wrong time are very similar in that if you peak at the wrong time, so if you peak early, you're gonna be burned out for your marathon. If you peak after your marathon, and you won't really know this unless you run a race and that will be kind of impossible since you're, you'll be recovering from the marathon, um, then you're just gonna be flat on race day and you're not really gonna run to your true potential. So uh, what's really helpful is to uh, A, make sure that you're not running too many short races. Uh, and you can do this by uh, making sure that any races that you run of say 10K or shorter, aren't done at 100% effort. Now, of course, there's some wiggle room and you can always break any rule in running. Uh, and, and I think that you can run fast 5Ks and 10Ks during a marathon training cycle. But if you run them too close to your marathon or even too early in the training cycle, or if you run too many of them, you're going to get uh, burned out or you're going to peak too early for the marathon because it's really a question about intensity levels. The marathon's not very intense, but a 5K sure, surely is. So if you're running a 5K every other week, starting at week two of a 16 or 20 week marathon training plan, you're going to peak way too early for that marathon. So my suggestion is to limit the number of races that you do before a marathon to roughly one to three, and to try to keep the distances of those uh, races somewhere in the 10K to half marathon range. Uh, you know, of course, you can, you can run races up to 25 kilometers, which is going to be, um, let's see if my math is correct, correct 15.5 miles. Did that in my head, very proud of myself. And, uh, you know, you can, you can still run long races like that uh, and, and still run a fantastic marathon. Um, you, you'll just want to make sure that you leave at least two to three weeks after your last race before your goal marathon. And that will ensure that you're still primarily focusing on training for the marathon and not racing all of these shorter races uh, and that you, you don't peak uh, too soon. So really great question. Uh, thanks a lot and uh, good luck with your goal marathon coming up. 
I'm planning to run a 10K, and I have a pretty good chance of placing in my age group this time around. I understand that most races use gun time for awards, but if I line up in the corral for my planned time, it would take me some time to get to the start line. In this race, the corrals are on the honor system. So, should I line up with my time, or should I start near the front regardless? Do you have any advice about starting a race when it's so busy with other runners? Catherine. Okay, question number two from Catherine. Uh, this is fantastic, and this is really about not just race strategy, but lining up strategy, corral strategy. And I, and I love this stuff because if you are really trying to run a personal best, you have to make sure that everything is planned. Your race strategy, your training before the race, obviously, and even the details of where to line up in the corral. I've heard way too many times from runners, everything goes perfectly in training, they're ready to run their best race, they know their strategy, but they start too far back in the pack and they spend way too much time and energy weaving around other runners and stuck behind walkers or, or people just going too slow. So Catherine, it is very important to line up in the appropriate spot. Uh, and, I, and I would recommend that you line up in the appropriate spot, not, uh, you know, don't start with the people who are gonna start the race at five minute pace if you're gonna run eight minute pace. You're gonna be that person slowing them down because you're not lined up properly. So what I find to be very helpful is, yes, line up where you're supposed to be within the corral system. Um, you know, a lot of big races have uh, corrals that uh, are close to the front, you know, they are the faster paces and then they get progressively slower. Uh, and what, what's helpful is after you line, after you get in the right corral, move off to the side. There's going to be less people that start the race uh, way off to the side and, and you're going to be able to, to, to weave around people if necessary uh, if you're off to the side of the road. Uh, now the other thing is the difference between gun time and chip time. If it takes you, let's say, a minute to get to the starting line from your corral after the gun, your gun time will be a minute slower than your chip time. Now if this race is any good, they will have a timing mat right at the starting line and your chip that you're wearing either on your shoe or on your bib number won't be activated until you cross that starting line. So I wouldn't worry about starting too far back in the corral because you're going to lose time before you get to the starting line. You're actually going to be timed perfectly if, if there's chip timing. And, and most races now have chip timing. I, I avoid races that don't have chip timing because then your finish time isn't accurate uh, and it's just, you know, it's... In 2015, guys, if you're not... If, if a race isn't using chip timing, it's not worth your race entry fee, okay? And so once your chip is activated after you cross the starting line, then you're off to the races, <laughs> no pun intended. You are... Uh, you will be timed accurately and appropriately and uh, your, your finish time is gonna reflect the accurate time that you've run for that race. Um, so that, that's pretty much it, Catherine. Uh, good luck with your upcoming race, and uh, remember the other principles of good race strategy, which are don't go out way too fast, run the tangents, of course, and not take all those turns too wide, because that's not how the course is measured, and of course, don't listen to your Garmin, because it will measure the course long, but it's not accurate. For someone who is in moderate shape, but hasn't been physically active in multiple years, what's a realistic 10K goal after six months of average healthy training? Nick. All right, our final question from Nick is a really good one. Um, this is very much related to a previous question that I think was in episode seven, uh, about how to predict an accurate finish time in a race. And, and, and this is very, very difficult. Um, you know, in this particular example, uh, Nick has been uh, sedentary to almost sedentary for about 14 years. He's been exercising and training regularly for about six months. And he's wondering how close to his uh, 49, 50 minute 10K time he can get in his upcoming 10K race. Um, and so it's really hard. I mean, after 14 years of getting out of shape, it's going to take a lot longer than six months to get in shape. 
uh, and especially back to that same fitness level that, that Nick was 14 years ago. So Nick, what I would say is actually, uh, first and foremost, don't worry as much about your finish time as you might uh, if you were racing regularly and in great shape. Uh, I, I would focus on the effort of your race. So try to run the 10K at a 10K effort, and then you'll see what your finish time is, and you can base your training paces and future race goals off that fitness level. Uh, another really helpful strategy is to run, let's say a 5K race two or three weeks before your 10K to get an accurate estimate of your fitness level. Uh, and you can use a running calculator like Macmillan Running to estimate your 10K finish time after you've already run that uh, 5K race. Uh, and, and this strategy is really helpful because um, you know, unless you're racing 100% at 100% effort, you're never really going to know what you're capable of in a race situation. There's all those things that go on during a race that help you run faster that you're never able to duplicate in training. You know, your hormone levels are, are in, in a more beneficial state during a race than during just a normal faster workout that you might be doing. So you're going to be able to push yourself harder. Um, just knowing that it's a race uh, and having people around you and being in that race environment and having that atmosphere is going to propel you to a faster finish time. So uh, I think the best way to estimate your finish time is to, uh, you know, just run a lot of races. Uh, and, and the good thing about running shorter races like 5K or 10K is that you can run them more frequently. It's not like a marathon where it's a, it's a one and done race. You train for it for five or six months, you run one marathon, and then you can't really race another marathon at that level for another five or six months. So it's a, it's a much more long-term endeavor. But with a 5K or a 10K, you can race one every, every one to three weeks uh, if you wanted to be really aggressive because the recovery is a lot shorter uh, and uh, you know, the, the, the damage that you do to your um, you know, hormonal system and, and muscles and, and all that stuff isn't as dramatic. So you can bounce back much more quickly and run more races. So um, uh, Nick, I would definitely race more frequently. Uh, and then you know, if, if that's not a possibility and you really want to estimate a, a goal 10K time, then the next best thing is to uh, you know, use your, the faster workouts that you're doing to estimate your 10K finish time. So, you know, if, if you can get on the track and do, let's say, four by mile or, you know, better yet, six times a mile. Now, granted, that's a very advanced 10K specific workout. Uh, and, and to be honest, I don't think you're there yet. But just by way of um, yeah, example here, a specific workout to whatever race you're training for is the second best way to estimate your finish time. So let's just say, Nick, you want to run a 50 minute 10K. Um, and you know that's that's uh, five minutes per kilometer. If you can get on the track and run ten by uh, kilometer or ten by thousand meters at five minutes per kilometer with a very short rest of maybe uh, one minute of easy running in between, then you're probably likely to to run that uh, that pace for the for the race. Um, so you know, look at your workouts, and if your workouts are indicative of a certain fitness level then you can you know, uh, parlay that into an estimated finish time. But the best way to do it is to simply run a couple races and then go from there. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Q&A with Coach, all about racing and race strategy. Um, I'm gonna, you know, we're right in the middle of the Dream Race Weekend giveaway, so I'm super excited about that, and I wanted to focus a little bit more on racing right now. If you haven't entered the giveaway, it's totally free. I'm giving away a uh, free race entry fee, flight, and hotel for your dream race. So we'll put up a link to enter that giveaway uh, right about here or so. Uh, and if you did enjoy this episode, it would mean a lot if you uh, link to it from your blog or if you were maybe send this video to uh, one of your runner friends so they can learn more about race strategy too. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Fitzgerald from strengthrunning.com, and I'll see you next time.